Hello friends, welcome to Pprite Academy. In today's session, we'll be discussing about zinc on alkaloids, quinine sulfate. So this is coming under anti-malarial drugs. We'll be discussing the structure of quinine, mechanism of action of quinine, as well as important uses. So we'll start with the class. We have already discussed what anti-malarial drugs are. So under that anti-malarial drug classification, one of the important class of drug is zincon alkaloids. So zincon alkaloids are of two types. One is quinine and the other one is quinidine. So you have here quinine and quinidine. Okay. So these are the more, uh, two important alkaloids, zincon alkaloids. In that, uh, what we have in our syllabus is quinine. And so we'll be discussing in detail about the quinine and structure also. So this is basically derived from cinchona bark. So this is a picture of cinchona bark. There is two important synonyms for cinchona bark. One is a Peruvian bark and the other one is a Jesuits bark. So two important synonyms. This has been uh, seen as MCQ questions in various competitive exams. So it will be good if you are able to remember the two synonyms. Now let's see the structure of quinine. So as you have already uh, seen, this is quinoly nucleus present here. So this is a basic nucleus of quinine. So the numbering starts from the nitrogen, heteronitrogen atom and it goes like this. And we have the C4 carbon here. From there, it goes to the next carbon, which is C5, and it goes like this. Okay. So, two places you will find the substitution. One is present in the C4 position, and second is present in the C6 position. Okay. So, in C6 position, you will find the methoxy substitution methoxy substitution and in fourth position c4 position we have a special kind of nucleus which is very typical for quinine and we call it as the quinicladine nucleus so we we'll have to see what the quinicladine nucleus is okay so the numbering starts from this heteroatom from here it will start and it moves to the second carbon atom so it's kind of like a bridge which is present here you can see it's like a bridge present between the heteroatom nitrogen and the C4 carbon. We have a bridge like structure connected using two carbon. So N1, then the second carbon is N2, then we have the uh, sorry, second is C2, and we have the third one C3, and finally C4. And after that, it goes like C5 then c6 then the numbering is like it goes to the diagonal this opposite position you will find that there is a c7 c8 and then c9 in this c9 is a stereo center as you can already see there the oh is directed out of the plane and the hydrogen is directed uh, towards back of the plane and this configuration known as the r configuration Similarly, you can also find S configuration, but if it is like an S configuration, then here the carbon will be having the edge placed towards the uh, front of the plane. So in this case, the edge will be placed towards the front of the plane and OH will be directed towards the back of the plane. So this is going to be the S configuration and if it is a S configuration, then it will become we know that there is two forms of zinc uh, alkaloids. One is quinine and the second one is quinidine. So this is quinidine. So depending upon the stereo center, it will just change, right? Depending upon the stereo center of C9 and C8, the most important is the C9. So if it is changing to the S configuration, it means that the it forms a different uh, nuclear different uh, zincon alkaloids which is quinidine all right so and uh, we need we can also draw in a different way we can draw in this form also in which uh, it looks like an open kind of booklet 
it starts from the nitrogen and then here is a C2 carbon, then C3 carbon, here is a C4, C5 and C6 and then we'll have to go opposite side that the diagonal portion will number to the C7, then we have the C8 and then uh, it will go to the C9, right? And to attach to the C5 position, you will find that there is a vinyl function group. So toward to the fifth position, there is an attached vinyl function group that you can see here. That is CH double bond CH2, which is a vinyl function group. So this is about the structure of QNE and talking about the mechanism of action of QNE. So we have already seen uh, that the malaria has got two phases, one which is happening within the human and the other one which is happening in the mosquito, right? And the mechanics of quinine is happening, uh, is affecting a stage which is happening within the human, okay? And in this human, you can already see that there is different phases, one which is affecting the liver, and then from the liver we know that it enters into the RBC stage. So quinine is going to affect uh, the RBC stage, which we also call as the erythrocytic stage. So in the erythrocytic stage, once uh, the RBCs get infected and we know that there is a phase which is happening within the RBC and uh, the proliferation of the pl plasmodium species will happen within the RBC and this sexual cycle is going to repeat and it finally forms uh, trophozoites which matures into the neurozoites. So what happens is that for this maturation uh, or the proliferation within the RPCs, it requires amino acids. The plasmodium requires amino acid. And how the plasmodium is going to obtain this amino acid? It is going to do the lysis of hemoglobin. And as we all have, we cannot see here that it will be converted to the heme and the globin part. And globin part is with which the plasmodium is obtaining the amino acids, correct? So it will break down the globin and convert it into the amino acids. And this amino acid is being utilized by the plasmodium for its survival, for its proliferation. So it's very important that plasmodium obtains this amino acid by breaking hemoglobin. But what is remaining uh, when the hemoglobin breaks? We know that there is a heme part which is coming here. Right, so the heme part is also obtained as a byproduct in this case, and the heme part is actually toxic to the plasmodium. So, the, what the plasmodium does is that it will convert it into hemozoin. So, hemozoin is a non toxic form of heme, in particular, very protoporphyrin. So, this is the type of heme which is toxic to the plasmodium. Uh, species. So, uh, in order to reduce the toxicity, what plasmodium does, it use with the help of uh, enzyme which is called as a heme polymerase. As you can already see, there is a term polymerase, which means that this heme will be joined together. Okay, it undergoes polymerization reaction and it will be joined together. This will be converted to a uh, polymer kind of thing which is called as the hemozoin. So what is the specialty hemozoin? This is non-toxic. This is non-toxic towards the plasmodium which means that it does not affect the plasmodium. Okay, It does not cause any problem to the plasmodium. It does not co affect in plas plasmodium in any ways. So here is our quinine coming into action. So what quinine does is that it goes and inhibit heme polymerase, right? So once the heme polymerase is inhibited, the polymerization reaction will not happen, which means that the heme will not be converted to hemozoin. This will be inhibited. The conversion of heme to hemozoin will be inhibited, which means that the amount of heme present within the RBC is going to increase. Or in other words, we can say, the furry pore uh, protoporphyrin, which is a toxic form of heme, is going to increase within the RPC and this is going to affect the plasmodium species. How it is going to affect the plasmodium? It's going to 
uh, lysis or kill the plasmodium along with that it will also destroy the rbc in which uh, this is happening okay so anyway the plasmodium will be destroyed in the rpc stage this is how quinine is affecting and helping in uh, reducing the malarial infection so we'll discuss what are the uses main uses of quinine it is mainly used for treating the uncomplicated malaria which is caused due to plasmodium falciparum as we have already discussed plasmodium falciparum is the most common type of malaria malaria is caused due, due to this plasmodium falciparum and what are the other applications it can it is also used as antipyretic to reduce the temperature and analysis it to reduce the pain as well as to reduce inflammation that is anti-inflammatory effect so these are the applications of quinine and quinine is available in different uh, doses form like it is available in 100 mg doses form 200 as well as in 300 mg dosage forms okay so quinine uh, most important is that you need to understand the structure the basic mechanism of action and, and few uses of quinine maybe it might get uh, as five mark question okay so that's all for today's session thank you for watching people academy have a wonderful day bye